name's Catherine Garman from AHDB and today we're going to NIAB in Cambridge to learn about wheat disease assessing. We'll be looking at some AHDB recommended list trials which have been inoculated with yellow rust but they've also got some septoria infection so we'll be learning the best way to do assessments when both diseases are present. First we'll learn about some of the diseases before going on to do an assessment using the NIAB scale. What we're looking at are these bright orange, yellowy pustules on the leaf, and uh, sometimes some of the pustules uh, you can't see that many uh, pustules on each leaf, but that's okay. It's just yellow rust coming. It actually takes about 14 days in ideal conditions from the date of infection to the date you'll actually see uh, the pustules on the leaf. So there will be some leaves that have very few pustules and that's just because it's only just starting on that particular leaf and yet you'll have other leaves that have actually a lot of sporulating pustules. Another thing with yellow rust is that later on in the season you actually find telia. So you can see this is telia, it's usually best to see telia on the underside of the leaf for yellow rust. Uh, and you can see these bigger, the black spores, they look a little bit, uh, they glisten a bit like tar. So the, these are telia spores, they're produced later in the season on uh, old stripes of yellow rust. Brown rust actually does the same, it also forms telia, but you'll find that the yellow rust telia is, uh, follows, mirrors the yellow rust, so it's usually in stripes, uh, whereas brown rust will be all over the leaf. So the thing to note with yellow rust is that uh, it does form stripes on the leaves at adult plant stage, but you can see this plot is so heavily infected, it's actually gone past the stripy stage and it's just covering uh, the whole leaf. At seedling stage, it does the same, it will cover the whole leaf, and then adult plant stage, you'll see more of the, the striping effect. Another thing to note with yellow rust is that it's very hard to score it after heavy rain. Some of these uh, spores actually wash off and the leaves look quite uh, sort of like uh, they don't actually look like they've got that many pustules. So that's where you need to actually turn the leaf over and when you turn it over you'll see much more on the right side of the leaf. But brown rust, proper brown colour, reddish brown colour, much bigger pustules. They're usually spread out across the leaf. Sometimes they have a chlorotic halo, but usually it's just individual pustules scattered. When it's a, a heavy infection, they do clump together to form a brown appearance in, in patches. So these ones have got septoria. You'll have tiny, tiny little black dots in the centre of the lesion. Uh, these are pycnidia, they're quite easy to see in the field. Sometimes they go, do go a little bit paler as they get older, but you should still be able to see it. Septoria, I always find, is quite either silvery le lesions or it's this brown necrotic lesions, whereas yellow rust does tend to be more chlorotic. You can see the difference between yellow rust telia and pycnidia. Completely different size. Yellow rust telia, black tarry spots, whereas pycnidia is tiny, tiny. Sometimes you might need a hand lens to see it, especially if you're out in the field uh, or it's getting the septoria lesions a little bit older. Also septoria, it's regular. Sometimes it has this chlorotic halo, but you're just looking for that sort of necrotic or silvery lesion and always have a look to see if you can see pycnidia within the lesion. I think the septoria scale is a uh, really nice and easy because like one percent two small lesions per tiller so you're looking at a small lesion uh, probably about the same size as that as a small lesion and then you have uh, small lesions beginning to form areas of t uh, dead tissue across the width of the leaf septoria tends to constrict the leaf as well whereas yellow rust doesn't of course yellow rust will uh, as it gets older and older the it starts to curl and uh, you think it might be constricting the leaf, but actually the, the actual structure of the leaf is still there, whereas septoria uh, pinches the, the leaf as it spreads across the width of the leaf. So this one has got septoria and yellow rust on the same leaf. So you can see yellow rust here, I can see the pustules, but there's septoria in the middle, 
you can actually see the pycnidia on that lesion. So that's why we are recommending people walk their trial before they do assessments, a little bit earlier in the season, get your eye in, get a little bit more familiar with yellow rust. Uh, it's much easier to identify yellow rust when it's fresh, when it's new, and then when it gets older, it's, it becomes much more hard. But hopefully, if you've had a look at your plots uh, throughout the season, it will help you this is our plot here and you can see we've got some really good infection levels here uh, and it's one of the most susceptible varieties in this particular trial. So we're just looking at the, the percentages of how much disease you'd uh, call this plot. For this particular plot what I do is I look at my score sheet and you have a look, uh, I always kind of like start low and then work my way up. So you could have a look at 5% there, most tillers infected but some top leaves uninfected. Well, actually, I would say almost all those top leaves are infected, so I would say it's more than 5%. So you go up to the next one, which is 10%, all leaves infected, but leaves appear green overall. You think, yep, yeah, I would say all leaves are infected. If you go up to the next one, 25%, leaves appear half infected, half green. So then you have to have a look to see how much green you've actually got left there. And I would say, no, it's, it's not 25% yet. There's still quite a lot of green, especially on this top layer. Uh, part of the uh, uh, assessment key actually says examine top four leaves. And then if the top leaf has been fully expanded for less than 14 days, then you ignore that top leaf and refer to the second leaf as the top leaf. But these have been expanded for more than 14 days now, so we can count these in our assessment. It's not, I wouldn't say it's 25%. Uh, I would say it's probably, it is a little bit more than 10% because some of these top leaves have actually got a lot of yellow rust on them. So I might go maybe uh, about 15% for this plot. Maybe You might want to call it about 12, but 12, 15, anything like that this one here there isn't actually that much yellow rust on the top level but when you look down and when, when I'm assessing a plot I usually look at it in about three places so I'll look at here I'll look on the back row and then I'll look at again over here if you're doing big 12 meter plots then you need to be doing three or four points up each side of the plot and then you take an average across the whole plot uh, and the same with these, if you have uh, like an infection, more infection at one end, you take an average across the whole plot. So if you had a, let's say a 5% focus at one end and you had a look and you think, oh, well, it's only 0.1, there's hardly anything down that end. Then you spread it out and you think, well, my focus is about that big, I'll give it 3% overall. So just, it's always an average of your whole plot. Uh, so this one, if you actually bend it back, uh, by bending it back, you can see that all the leaves align and it's much easier to have a look. And uh, this plot has actually got quite a lot of yellow rust on the lower level. So although the top looks clean, I'll bend it back so you can see this side. You can see all those lovely stripes on this one. So this is where I'm thinking uh, on my score. And you think, well, 5%, two stripes per leaf. It's definitely more than two stripes per leaf because most of those leaves have got more than two stripes. So I know, already know it's more than 1%. I'll go up to the next one. 5% most tillers infected but some top leaves uninfected so it might be a some people might call it a 3% or a 4% but it's no higher than a 5% I can already see that it's got very little yellow rust has got some I can see it here there's a nice stripe there a nice stripe there not much there's a couple of stripes over here but I can't, there's a stripe there, stripe there, but not much overall. So this is one of your low scoring ones. Depending on how much you can see, it will be either a, a 0.1, a 0.5, or maybe a 1% if you can see quite a bit down there. So with, we'll just talk about increments here. For the people that are using the, the percentage uh, infection scale, uh, you don't have to do the same as me, but what I do, I use 0, I use 0 0.1, then I have 0 0.5, I use 1, I use 2, 3 and 4, then 5. I usually use 6 or 8, but uh, you might choose to use 7 if you're thinking, oh, it's between a 5 and a 10, I'll just put it down as a 7. And then from 10%, I go 12, uh, 15, 18, 20, 
I also use 22 and then after 25 I go up in 5% increments so for 30, 35, 40. These plots that have got very little, the one stripe per tiller, this 0.1, you're never going to get a plot that's got 0.1 stripe on every single tiller. So we use the 0.1 scale as a trace amount. So if you find one stripe, you can call it 0.1. If you find a stripe that looks like this, uh, but you're not sure, but you think, I mm, don't know, don't call it. Even if you think, no, you don't have to give that a 0.1. But if you can find a nice stripe that has got pustules, then yeah, just call it a 0.1, even though it might be the only uh, one on the whole plot. It's just showing that you've seen it. A lot of chlorosis on these top layer, this top level. So this is where you need to uh, have a look a little bit lower down to find the yellow rust. Because at the moment, if it's got no pustules, you'd be very hard pushed to say whether it's definitely yellow rust. But with this particular plot, if you turn it, so th this leaf looks really clotic on this side, but if you turn it over, you can see, oh, actually, now I can see quite a lot of pustules there. They're not in great shape, but they're definitely there. Find quite a, quite a lot of quite a lot of uh, plots that are like this where there isn't really that many pustules on them but as soon as you look a little bit closely you can see that there's enough yellow rust there to actually think well no actually I think almost all this chlorosis is yellow rust on this particular plot and if you have a look down the low on the lower level th there's tons of it some of these leaves are really heavily infected so this is one of these plots where you think uh, for this particular plot, I'm going to include, because the key actually tells you to include all chlorosis and necrosis uh, that belongs to that disease. So you can actually, on this particular plot, I would count this all as yellow rust, even though some of these leaves don't actually have that much active pustules. If you look closely enough, even the ones that just, you know, they, there are old pustules there. Another thing about yellow rust is that as it gets a little bit older, these pustules turn very flat uh, and sometimes they turn quite uh, like, a, sort of like a pale brown colour, quite white with age. Oh, they, it's almost as if they get a little bit sun bleached. For this particular plot, I'm thinking, well, 10% all leaves infected, but leaves appear green overall. It might be a little bit higher because I wouldn't say it looks particularly green in places, but anywhere around a 10 there for this one, possibly a 12 as it's all yellow rust. So this one, you think, hmm, looks clotic like that one, but is it yellow rust? So this is where we have to go a little bit lower. And you think, well, actually, there's hardly any of the pustules that I could see on that one, on this one. And you think, is this yellow rust? I don't know if this is yellow rust. Can I see any pustules? No, I can see some. So I know there is some yellow rust there. So it could be that there's a lot of septoria in this, this uh, so it does have sep septoria, uh, it could be drought stress, it could be uh, sort of like environmental factors, anything like that. So for this one, I think it actually has a lot less, than, even though it looks very similar to that plot, I think it's got a lot less active yellow rust. Even this chlorosis is showing that the yellow rust isn't really completing its life cycle now because it's, it's not sporulating. I would score it on the pustules that I can see. So all this striping, you'd be very hard pushed to say whether that's yellow rust. There is definitely yellow rust on here somewhere, but you have to look really hard for it. So I might only give it maybe, depending on how much I can see that's active, I might only give it a five, uh, or I might even go even lower than a five, because I'm just not convinced that all this is yellow rust. It could be that you come out here uh, in two weeks time and it's gone ballistic and it all, you know, you can see lots of sporulating pustules. But at this stage, then we what we would do is score it low and score it only based on the actual pustules you can see. I think that's what people are, are doing maybe you know later on this season they're seeing so much chlorosis they don't really know whether it's yellow rust and they're but they're assuming it is because they think oh well it you know it must be i can't see any pustules but it looks like you know so so much chlorosis it's but it, it's yellow rust but if you can't if you really can't see those pustules then uh score it low 
Uh, it's got septoria. I can see quite a lot of uh, chlorosis, but I can't at the moment see any yellow rust on this particular plot. This particular plot has got what we think is a rogue tiller here, because this plot, this tiller here is heavily infected. It's standing a little bit taller than its friends. So that's pub uh, we think this is uh, one of our control varieties. It's one of them. Uh, so that one, I would actually discount that one if I don't think it belongs to that plot. When it comes into ear, it's much more easier to tell your rogue tillers, but I would actually put a note in my assessment saying uh, zero on the rest of the plot, uh, plus one in, uh, rogue tiller, heavily infected rogue tiller, just to remind myself that yes, there's a rogue, and I'll just wait a little bit later in the season to make sure that it is a rogue and that it's not a true result. So this one is uh, another heavily infected one. We can see a lot of yellow rust, active yellow rust, uh, in the lower levels. Again, if we turn over some of these leaves, there is a lot of chlorosis on this, these plots. But if you look closely, even with the very chlorotic leaves, there are some pustules to be found in there. And even, you know, you can see there's pustules on these top layers. So I would cl class all that chlorosis as yellow rust. See yellow rust, I can see quite a lot of telia in this one, so it definitely has got yellow rust. Uh, top layer, layer pretty clean. I might give this one a five. Five is most tillers infected, but some top leaves uninfected. This plot, it looks it does look very messy. There is a lot of there is a lot of this where there's some empty stripes, quite a lot of septoria, but if you have a look through it, there's enough active yellow rust to be able to score the plot based on the, the pustules you can see. So maybe about a five for that one. So I know it's got yellow rust, I can see some of it. Has it got much on the top level? Prob probably not, it's got quite a lot of this chlorosis going on, but I can't see any pustules. Even by t always turn with these one these taller varieties that fold over, always turn over the leaf to make sure uh, to have a look for those pustules. Uh, I can't see that many act, that much active yellow rust on this top layer. So I'd probably give this one a five percent overall because that's most of it is infected. Some top leaves uninfected.